Today, we're learning how to stand on God's truth. Only He can give us the hope and the confidence to fulfill our dreams. Come on, join us. You know, in talking about purpose, I think one of the things that so many of us have is this assignment we feel on our hearts, and it's not coming to pass. And we're like, am I wrong? Am I feeling this wrong? Or we have this big dream or this thing that we feel God's calling us to do, but then the days go by or the weeks or the months or the years or the decades and it's not happening. And, you know, in my journey, um, I really found that learning to trust and then just keep going during that time is hard. And I feel most people get tempted to stop trusting so they quit. Yeah. After one rejection or after one closed door or after 10 closed doors. And, you know, I think about the early years of It Cosmetics, this little company I had right in my living room and had this big dream to, to do things differently and change the beauty industry and use real women as models and all this stuff and, and show my own skin issues. And what I didn't know was going to happen in that journey was it would be over three years of just constant no's, of not being able to pay myself the first three years. And I remember having this feeling like time and time again, like God, I'm feeling like I'm supposed to be doing this. Like I feel like this is my assignment right now. So why do I feel this so strongly when I pray about it? But then everyone around me is telling me no and you're not the right fit and you don't have what it takes. And I remember just, meetings in the different department stores and the different beauty stores and and literally just being told not not just no for now but like no, no like never, no. never forever no <laughs> like personal like, no yes personally yes. Yeah. yeah and you're like oh my goodness like how it's hard when we have that feeling right that we're supposed to be doing it and we feel like it's coming from god but then everything we see feels like it's against us. And I remember nights, you know, I had called QVC and sent them products for years, and it was always a no. And one big day, I finally got the head of all of QVC Beauty on, and he's a legend. And, and I thought, if he's going to do a call with me and spend his precious time, like, this is going to be my big break. Like, this, there's no way he would get on a call and say no. And I think I had sent so many products <laughs> over. And he, he got on a call with me and, and, uh, and said, you know, I've reviewed your products with, with all of our buyers. You know, it's unanimous. It's a no. You're not the right fit for QVC or for our customers. And I just remember tears streaming down my face. And I'm like, oh, oh, but I am the right fit. And I just try to tell him all the reasons. <laughs> and I'm like hoping he's not hearing me cry. And I'm like trying to be confident, you know. And I remember him thanking me for loving QVC and saying it's a no. And I remember crying myself to sleep that night. We were down to no money. And I was like, God, is my intuition wrong? Am I hearing you wrong? I think I hear that still small voice from you, that nudge, that, Really, it wasn't a nudge. It was clear. It was a knowing that I'm supposed to be doing this. Yes. And if I'm supposed to be pursuing this dream, it feels like an assignment. Why does this keep happening, right? And I just kept feeling that clarity. And I think those moments that, you know, do we listen to that knowing that we know comes from Him? Mm -hmm. Or do we listen to the no's happening all around us, mm -hmm. right? Right. And sometimes we're the ones rejecting ourselves. We're the ones saying, I don't think I have what it takes. I don't, I don't think I'm enough. God, maybe I thought I could do this, but maybe I'm just not qualified, right? It's like, which one we listen to comes yes. down. It defines our life. And yes. I remember that day just crying myself to sleep. And you know when you get bad news and if you've ever had this happen and you wake up the next day and you hope it was a dream? Yeah. And then it wasn't. <laughs> and then like that happened three <laughs> days in a row. And I just didn't know how we were going to make it. And a defining moment happened um, that I just want to share, especially if someone at home needs this today. But we um, kept going. You know, it was like, okay, with God and grace, we're just going to keep going. And got a big phone call from a potential investor. And I was like, oh my gosh, if, like, I just, I saw it so clear in my head. <laughs> I thought if this potential investor that's made all these little companies, big household names and grocery stores and brands we all shop, and I was like, oh, and they loved our product. And I thought, if they invest in us, like, they can use their power. Maybe God's going to use them and they're going to open all these doors and they're going to get me in stores. And I just saw it all. And so we started meeting with them and going through the meeting process. And 
the diligence process where they look at all your future products, all the stuff. We got to the final meeting and uh, the head guy, my husband and I flew up for the meeting and the head guy, we were all together and his team was awesome and just so encouraging. And he ended up saying, he's about three feet from me and my husband was right next to me where Victoria is. And, um, and he says to me, you know, we are really proud of everything you guys have built. Your product's really good, um, but it's a no. Uh, we're gonna pass on investing in cosmetics. And by this point, I had heard hundreds of no's, right? And I was just like, okay, can you tell me why? And he got really quiet for a while. And, um, and then he took a long pause and he says, do you want me to be really honest with you? I said, yes, please, you know. And he just looked at me and he said, um, I just don't think women will buy makeup from someone who looks like you with your body and your weight. Oh my god. And gosh. I remember when he said those words, I remember, well, first of all, a lifetime of body doubt and self-doubt. Like I remember it just feeling like it flooded my body, but I didn't feel any anger toward him. The thing I want to share that happened to me, like clear as day, is I he said those words, I just don't think women will buy makeup from someone who looks like you with your body and your weight. And I got this feeling like, like so strong. I remember it like it was yesterday that said he's wrong. Mm-hmm. Like I felt it. This guy, and by the way, he had great intentions. He sure. just, you know what? His, his whole belief system, I can't make money off her. You don't look the part, no. That was his thing. Somebody looks us in the eye and says, you're not enough. You're not the right fit. You don't have what it takes, right? And when I look back at this moment, that feeling I had, that knowing it was like that he's wrong, it was like, oh, what really happened was that guy gave me a no, but God gave me a knowing, right? And it's like, oh, what if all the rejections are just no's? But the only thing that matters is that we're tuned into that knowing. And maybe I'm three years in and really poor and I don't know what's going to happen or how I'm going to make it, but I still have that knowing, right? And that knowing changes and said, okay, your journey's up. Okay, then I'm going to trust it. But it said, keep going. And we kept going and it was really hard. It was really hard. And um, and I'm going to cut past a decade now, a decade later, no, eight years later, eight years later, um, when we- That's a long time. Yes, and you know, here's the thing is so many times in those years, I would, those words would come back in my head, mm-hmm. right? And how many times do we have a pain or a, a rejection or mm-hmm. something someone said to us and we remember it? I would imagine myself turning down the volume on it and turning up the volume on that knowing, mm-hmm. you know, and just keep going. and just to share the fun part, because that's the not fun part. Um, <laughs> the, 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 the fun part. Um, fast forward, I think it was eight years. That little company that, that I built had become the largest luxury makeup company in the country. And we were acquired by L'Oreal. And when that happened, it made the homepage of the Wall Street Journal online. I mean, it was everywhere the day that it happened. And I heard from him. <laughs> and I hadn't heard from him in however many years. And I heard from him and he, he said, congratulations um, on the L'Oreal deal. I was wrong. I'm so happy for you. And, and, um, and, <laughs> and the human part of me wanted to be like, oh, I can give you 1.2 billion reasons why you're wrong. Because <laughs> we sold for over a billion dollars, you know. Um, or, you know, it reminded me of, you know, in the movie Pretty Woman where they wouldn't serve her. And then she goes back in and she's like. Big mistake. Huge, <laughs> huge. I want to say that, but I'm like, no, no. I have been given too much grace in my life, and so I was graceful and just said thank you. And um, but I just think, you know, so many times it's so much easier, especially when we have family around us that loves us and friends that love us, and they're telling us all the no's, even though they don't realize it. They're telling us all the reasons maybe we should doubt ourselves or feel like we don't have enough. And often it's ourselves telling ourselves those things. Mm-hmm. And I just think that, you know, as we talk about purpose and those things on our heart, and it can be something like, I'm meant to be a painter, or I'm supposed to dance, or any of those things. And we start to just listen to the no's over the knowing. And I think tuning back in intentionally to the knowing can be so, that nudge, that voice, that impression can be so... um, Fulfilling, yeah. and then we stop worrying. Empowering, empowering. Yes. yes. You know, yes. that's the best blessing you probably have ever had. Was that no? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was thinking this morning, probably in your lifetime, you just have a couple mountaintop experiences. Mm-hmm. The rest of it is plugging through every day, yeah. 
knowing that I'm called, I'm chosen, declaring what the Word of God says, no, you know, and not listening to the outside voices of them saying and, and overcoming every day. Let me just take that personally. I overcome every day. Yes. You have to overcome your fears. You have to overcome your, your lack of confidence. You have to overcome all your insecurities. And so if we can get to the place where we hear the no or we experience something that is kind of against me, yeah. this circumstance that seems so against me yeah. now. What is my response to that? Because I think that is the currency of heaven. That's right. That faith down on the deep side that, that says, no, you're actually not my answer. <laughs> no, That's you're right. not my satisfaction. No, you're not my peace. No, you're not my joy. My, my happiness doesn't come from you. It comes from God. And I think if we can take everything that's against us and reply back the truth yeah. with the truth yes. of God's word and what God says, I believe that when we get to heaven, that's what we give to the Lord is that when everything was against me down there, I said you were my healer. That's I declared right. that you were my peace. I declared that you were my joy and my satisfaction and my health and my wholeness. Yes. You were my rock. You were my, and I believe that's what we get to give to the Lord when we get there. And I love that you mentioned faith, right? Because it just reminds me when the scripture says, we walk by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. Because in the face of all the rejection, we're still expected to keep building. Yes. So faith being the currency is that, okay, I'm hearing all these no's, but that doesn't stop what my assignment is. Right. And so I admire how even in the face of no, you're still investing. Yeah. Even in the face of no, you are willing <laughs> to go bankrupt. <laughs> then, you know, thank God, no. <laughs> no to bankruptcy. <laughs> But the beauty of that is that when you trust that knowing, when you trust what God said, you can keep building even when the world doesn't understand. You know, we brought up Noah, you know, in a previous conversation, right? And we're talking about how, you know, Noah had to build this ark. But he's building, and these years are going by. He's never seen rain, and he's still not seen the rain yet, but he knows what God said. While everyone is making fun of him, God is showing him a pattern. Yeah. While everyone is mocking him, like you're, you know, or even his children are coming home, Daddy, people think you've lost your mind. God is still showing him this vision. And so I think that's so powerful for all of us because when God gives us something to manifest in the earth, it's coming from him. It's not coming from the world, right? So the world may not understand it, but everything has its time and its season. And when that season hits, God opens the right door. And so for me, you know, one of the scriptures that anchor me, you know, in the times of when the world does not understand what you're doing, when the people you feel like you're going to open the door and you're going to open the door and none of them yeah. open the door. You know, is I get back to the scripture that says when God opens a door that no one can shut That's right. and he shuts a door that no one can open. Yeah. So if this door doesn't open, this is not the door God intended for me. Right. And it gets, you know, it, it could feel like the rejection is coming at you personally when it's constant, right? When it's like, no, 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 no. It, you might as well start singing a song called no, you know? <laughs> no, it's me. <laughs> but the beauty is knowing that at the end of the day, there is something that God has put in my spirit. I can't shake it off. Trust it, yeah. right? Don't wait for it some kind of outside approval, keep building, yeah. keep building with tears, keep building with everything, just keep building. And when destiny moments are meant to collide, they do. And it's the most beautiful thing. You know, the difference between a dream and a scheme is this. A scheme is how it affects just you. A dream that is of God is how can it affect the lives of others. And I think in, in your case, knowing that God puts something inside of you and refusing to give it up. Man, what a testimony. Yeah. You know. Well, that's how you can tell if it's really from God, too. If it won't it go, won't go away. away. You right. cannot make it go away, that's even right. amidst all the no's. You can't even bury it. You know, it's there. Yeah. And a lot of times people don't, maybe it doesn't come out exactly like they thought. Yes. Or the vision isn't even clear. But there's something that they're pursuing, that they're knowing. And there's probably people in the audience right now saying, I have that knowing. And Jamie, thank you for reminding me that I can't allow anyone else to cause me to bury 
that because, you know, the Bible says that everything is yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And so what you did is you put the amen on it. You put the so be it, God. I don't know exactly how it's going to turn out. I may not be able to, you know, articulate it, but I know that I know that I know that it is from you. And so I am going to keep going. And so I think that's the difference. When things are not exactly from God, it's easier to let them go. But when it's there, man, you can't run from it. You just can't get away from it. So I love that. Yeah, I remember the Lord telling Matt and I years ago that you'll have entrance into the hearts of the ungodly without them knowing it and to make his go into places that are dim and unheard and make his name famous. So we felt that that call was in Hollywood. So... In 1992, we leave here where his mom and dad had founded TBN and kind of in line for, you know, the baton passing back then. And here we just kind of bail and go to Hollywood and live in the Hollywood Hills and bloodied our nose. And you talk about going bankrupt. We had remortgaged. I mean, I just feel you every time you talk about that. We had mortgaged everything. We had, and then some, I mean, our dog and our kids, and we just, everything was on the line. I remember telling our children, they would say, well, what if this movie doesn't do well? We'd say, well, we have a Suburban outside. <laughs> and, and we'll take your little Nintendo. And we'll put it, you know, I mean, because everything, and we knew God had called us to do what we were doing, the knowing, the knowing. I know that I'm called to go into places where your name is dim and unheard and to make it famous and to have entrance into the hearts of the ungodly without them knowing it. And God would do miraculous things to get us into a place. And then the next thing you do looked from the outside as just an ultimate failure where I remember feeling like the Lord had told us to buy this building. It was the Hanna-Barbera building there on the 101 freeway. And long, long story, just the, just God doing so many beautiful things. But I remember one day, the man who was going to help us buy that, our partner in this, the day the money was supposed to go, we called him and said, you're supposed to be transferring the money, the funds. And I remember him saying, I think that's the worst thing I could possibly do for you kids is buy that bill and I'm not going to do it. Wow. And I grew up in the faith world. I grew up, you know, Brother Hagen and everybody. And I was thinking, oh, my God, I don't even, you know, and I grabbed my hair. <laughs> Matt, Matt always says, could you just stand there and hold your hair? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm going, my God, I don't even know what faith is. If this isn't panning out the way I think it should be, this is a Failure. This is, what. what is that? God, what is faith? And I, I'm sorry, I don't even know what faith is. And I remember it just rocking me mm-hmm. to my core mm-hmm. and signing that $600,000 over to this multi-billion dollar company. You know, they didn't care, but it was everything. It was my heart and our soul and our belief and our faith. And it was just like, it was just sign it away, you know? And it was something that was so crazy to me. And I remember I just went in on the piano and I just started Jesus singing me. to the Lord. I know, <laughs> to be used of God. Oh, well, that was my other song. That was my other go-to. <laughs> and then the guy who did buy that property calls us and said, hey, would you guys like to come over and, and be in our building and be part owners of that? And, and now you're looking, instead of ownership, now it's stewardship, mm-hmm. you know, that I don't have to own anything, but I need to steward what God's put, you know, so oh, just word. things that you even think that God puts you in a position of miracles happening to get you there. And then it's like, what? But that growing and those no's that probably wouldn't be sitting here today. If that was a yes, Mm. we have to have those. We have to have those no's in our lives to push us, to drive us. And I always think, God, I don't want pain (laughs) and I don't want (laughs) struggle and I don't want to suffer. But that's the way. Push me to a better yes. Push me to a better yes. 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 Keep me on my knees so I'm not driven to my knees. 
Well, I'm, I think yeah. about giving birth in the natural that most women, I don't like women that don't have any pain at all yeah. uh, because yeah. my journey was not fun, but most of the time, nowadays I think it's a little bit different. You just give them a shot and they don't feel anything. But in my day, you give birth to children. I had my children naturally, <laughs> all of them. But at some point you're in so much pain, you just want to get out of the pain. You want to get your yes, you want to have that the birth of that baby. And in the spiritual, it can twist you up all kind of different ways and you don't even know who you are. And I think in those moments of difficulties is when what God is in your life is revealed to you by the steps you continue to take. And then you then you get the promised baby is born. And, and then it has its own set of challenges, obviously, in the natural. But in the spiritual, the dynamic is the same way. You birth things in the spirit that become part of who you are and your your journey. It's not just about inflicting pain to get there. It's a part of God weaving his purposes into you for so oftentimes a greater purpose that displays itself over a process of time, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, you look at where you're at today and it's still a journey for you. There's, I mean, you're in a different place. You have a lot of wisdom and experience. Uh, experience teaches us so much, but it's always a continual journey of faith, you yeah. know? I'm just thinking about that because now I, I still to this day get rejected all the time. <laughs> but you know, because right? sometimes it could be something simple. It could be like, oh, a friend didn't invite me. Right. That feels like it, right? We have different forms of rejection all the time. And, but I have a different relationship with it now yeah. because of the that's struggle good. I went that's through, good. right? And so that's kind of the beauty of it now. And, you know, the daughter who is about to turn four and her name's Wonder. And, you know, I can't I wait that. to be, can't wait to be like, so what'd you fail at today? Right. I, 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 <laughs> I have a friend, um, Sarah, who founded Spanx. Actually, she grew up with parents that asked, her dad would always ask her at the dinner table, what'd you fail at? And, and I think when we can all of a sudden change that relationship where we're not afraid of it, yeah, uh, and we have that trust, right? That that because I think so many of us we can confuse that failure or that rejection or that no or that exclusion with oh I, I was wrong this isn't from God you know because it because it didn't happen you know yeah. the first time or the tenth time or the twentieth time and I just think you know I would love to pray um, just over each of us and that one person that one person. Um, God, that one person who's at home, who's joining us right now, who maybe has been listening to the no's or to the setbacks or to the things not going their way or to the closed doors and, and maybe thought for a minute that that was from you. And maybe today they're going to uh, turn the volume down on that stuff and, and really just turn the volume up in their own soul, in their own spirit, uh, to your voice, um, to your voice that maybe placed a, a dream or, or an assignment on their heart. And maybe, maybe today they're gonna pick that paintbrush back up again um, and paint, maybe for the first time ever, or for the first time in a long time, because you put that in their heart to do, or maybe they're gonna sign up for that ballroom dance class you know, even if they're 95 years old or 19 years old, they're gonna sign up for that ballroom dance class today or maybe right now in the middle of this prayer, they're gonna stand up and they're gonna dance in their living room again because they're gonna reinvigorate, reinvigorate the assignment, the dream, the purpose on their heart. And Lord, I just wanna um, encourage everyone but especially that one person who needs to hear this today, who maybe they have just loving people around them that mean well, but just only speak words into them through the lens of their own fear. And maybe they just need to, um, to just take a moment and kind of take their microphone back from, from everyone else and, and just give it to you and let you speak into it. Um, and let you remind them that, you know, maybe they have had the rejection and maybe they have had the setbacks, but it's not an indication that their calling isn't divinely orchestrated. It's not an indication that it's not coming from you. It's not an indication that they should give up if in fact they still feel from you that it's on their heart and that you've given them everything they need to fulfill the calling on their heart. If they have a, a dream or a purpose, you've equipped them with everything they need for that to come to pass and they just need to trust in you on the journey, just like each one of us need to continue to do every single day. In Jesus' name, amen. 
At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.